Bernie Sanders in his campaign brought out a while back that he that the he's talking about the corporate media and the shows like those Sunday morning shows like Face the Nation, Meet the Press, This Week. They he said they never talk about global warming at all. They don't bring it up, and they you never hear anything about the campaign finance corruption. And I was watching Face the Nation yesterday, and it seems to me that they're leaving out an awful lot of stuff. And I either they're awfully Maybe they've never had political science degrees. Maybe they, I mean, the host of that is he has he been through political science at all? Has he had any kind of, you know, training in politics or economics or anything that relates to, you know, the politics in the country, you know, the political movement and everything? It seems like they, it's an awful superficial report, and even the people they get on there, um, you know, they've been like with with the Washington Post. Well, that. Washington Post and the New York Magazine or the New York Times or whatever it is they work for, these periodicals, it, it seems like they're, the quality is awfully superficial when I watch it. And I don't know if it's because Viacom owns it and they don't, you know, they, they want to censor anything that has to do with, you know, the corporate, corporate America and their control over the 1% the and their control over the government with the campaign money. They don't want the public to know about it. I don't know for sure, but I watched Face the Nation yesterday, and what I can't understand uh, how these people like Chink and uh, Mark Figueredo and Debbie, um, you know, the same progressive, and three others all have better reports than Face the Nation. And, you know, they're, they're more intelligent, they cover more, they get to the bottom of things, they fix things. I mean, and these are nationally shows. These people are supposed to know something. And well, some of these people are sort of semi-professional, or seem to be. I think Chink had a lot of. I don't know. He's they've been with the government and stuff. I think, but they're professional. But they. It seems to me that the face of the nation ought to be a lot better than it is. And the, yesterday they had Ben Carson on there, and they talked to him for about ten to fifteen minutes about uh, Trump's plan or Trump's comment about. Hillary being a bigot. And Carson, he's a surgeon, you know, and aren't surgeons intelligent? <laughs> I mean, I, I, Jill Stein seems a lot smarter than Carson. She's a doctor. And Ron Paul seems a lot smarter than Carson. Maybe it doesn't take a real high IQ to be a surgeon. You just got to be able to stand blood. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I heard one report that said that actually the average IQ of a surgeon was about 120. But I mean, I don't know, but it seems like he should have understood more than he did. Um, and this comment that he made about Hillary being a bigot, I mean, why does he understand this uh, that Trump made about Hillary being a bigot? If he knows about Trump's uh, plan at all or his platform, you he, think he'd know and he'd make the case. And uh, I don't know if it's censorship or what it is, but what it is, basically his claim is that Hillary, I, I've, I went over to in a previous report, but I figure... Maybe if I do it again, more people will see it. I don't know. But anyway, uh, what he's talking about is pragmatic bigotry. It's not, in other words, she's all talk, no action. In other words, she puts on a certain face, you know, to the public that she's going to fix everything with a black race and it's right on their side when in actuality she's taking campaign money from uh, big corporations and she's dependent and she's used this campaign money to get ahead of Trump and he hasn't used any yet. He started last week, and his numbers are already rising now. So you know that she, she, the, the people have success with campaign money, and I hope Trump's using his own money. But you know he's not dependent on it one way or the other. But well, she is, and you can tell there's a lot of success with negative campaigning and campaign money, and from corporate America it has a lot to do with who wins, and that's probably why most of 190 percent of the independents and the Sanders supporters are voting for uh, Hillary because of all the negative campaigning she's been doing. So like I say, they're putting in their hands, in the hands of the 1% with the you know, negative campaigning. Uh, but anyway, his his argument was a pragmatic, he's called it pragmatic bigotry. And it has to do with, um, we had, you know, everyone knows about South Side of Chicago. I mean, it's real dangerous. And, you know, that's, that's a concern to the 
the black race, and there's mostly black people that live there. I mean, I don't heard of a black. I heard a black guy once that's talking. He said it's just like a war zone, and he lived there. He said in the neighborhood he lived in, on a scale of one to ten, it was about an eight. In other words, your probability of getting shot was almost as bad as it could be. It's the same as the Vietnam War, or higher than that. And you know, the people that live there trying to raise kids don't like that. They want to do something about it. Well, Trump's claim is that the re if you get to the crux of it, that why you have so much crime, it has to do with the uh, drugs coming out of Mexico, the drug dealers, and the gangs. I mean, it's organized crime, essentially. Gangs are organized crime. We know that most of the people that live there don't support it. Their kids are getting shot, and I just heard one last night got shot. Well, you know, and they weren't happy about it. You know that. In fact, they had a report on, I just heard a report tonight on the, um, well, it was ABC News uh, Nightline. And they had, you know, talked about four or five people getting shot, several. I don't know, but but the reason you can't stop it is because of the 1% in their stronghold over the government. It has the reason you have the problem is because the 1% employs cheap labor. They want the illegals. They employ the illegals. How many times have you heard of a packing plant getting in trouble with the federal government for hiring illegals? I've heard four or five reports of it. They have campaign money. They have a lot of it. That's why you can't protect the borders. They've been coming in since 1980. They've never been able to stop it. And that's the reason, because they run the government. Well, what Trump is saying, arguing, is that you have to not be dependent on campaign money in order to stop this from happening. And right now he's wanting to deport just the illegal ones, and that's what he says. Uh, but in order to do that, you have to cut into the power base of the 1% and their control over Congress, which Hillary isn't going to do. She's getting all kinds of campaign money. So uh, basically, and also that means if you stop the illegals from coming over, that means the Mexicans that are working in packing plants now, they'll have more jobs and they won't stay at the packing plant if there's fewer illegals because they'll have to raise their wages to get them to stay there. So what does that, that means more money for their families. That's what, and that's what, that's, Trump may be a bigot in the way he talks, but in his actions, it's Hillary that's the bigot. And that's what his whole speech was about. And Ben Carson, it went right over his head. And the head of the face of the nation, it went right over his head. At least if it was in their head, you sure, they sure were quiet about it. And, uh, Let's see. The other problem that I heard on Face the Nation, where uh, I thought well, someone should have known about it anyway. Well, and then they got they had this roundtable discussion, and uh, they were talking about one of them was talking about Hillary's donations and what a problem it was. One of them stood up for Trump. You know, I was talking about some girl, I can't remember what she said, and she said about Hillary getting campaign money. And there was one of these people that reports, uh, like I say, the New York Times, New York Magazine, not one of those, Washington Post, I don't know. But anyway, he had obviously had a strong bias on the side of Hillary. Well, why do they put people on that round table that have biases? People that have biases, most of the time they're dishonest, and they usually don't have any substance, and you get a superficial argument, and that's all it was, just superficial. And he says, well, name one unethical donation the Clinton Foundation ever got. You just give me one, and I bet you can't name one. I thought, you got to be kidding. I mean, obviously, they even brought out that it was a Chinese, it was the leader of China, or someone high up in the Chinese government, that met with him. I thought it was a leader of China. You have got to be kidding. This has been an issue since Romney that we don't have a good trade balance with China. Well, and it has to do with foreign lobbyists. Ross Perot brought this out 20 years ago. And, we, and Hillary supports the TPP and that's the reason. Because the Clinton Foundation, and that's why Clinton supported GATT, that's why he supported NAFTA. That's why I supported all those. The Clinton Foundation is getting donations from foreign lobbyists. And so, and they didn't bring that out. you got to be kidding me. You know, I mean, not one of them mentioned it. But um, Trump said he wanted out of the WTO.
Trump wants tariffs on trade. You can't get any of that with foreign lobbyists controlling the government. And if they're even giving the Clinton Foundation, and that's why she supports the TPP. That's why she said she just wants to change the wording and ram it through. So that means jobs going overseas. That means a trade balance at lousy. That means a whole lot of imports and not very many exports and an unfair trade balance with China. In other words, it's about a Foucault job. And my apologies go out to the Buttafuoco family for misusing their name, but I mean that's a good way to say it. That's what it is, and they can misuse my name anytime they want. But uh, with but without without receiving without being independent for campaign money, and that's why Trump wants out of the WTO. And that's why. And what does that mean? That means there's more jobs because of a better trade balance. There's more jobs because we're not going overseas. Both those things, that means more tax, that means a bigger, stronger tax base in the country because people are paying taxes, they're working paying taxes, and that means a balance of budget. That's all those things. And, and so, and getting money from the Chinese, they even mentioned, you know, this Chinese person they were getting a campaign money from. So, I mean, it's, it just, it, it's mind-boggling that this is a report on national TV, a political report, and they don't know any more than that. And the other thing, uh, I think that's all I had to say there on this one. I'm trying to keep them shorter. But anyway, thanks for watching. <clears throat>